Okay, so for today's video, we're gonna talk against protection against ransomware attacks or just general bad actors kind of getting into your server where they shouldn't by talking about our uh, SnapShield protection software as well in general best practices security for your Linux server. So let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna talk about the next peril. We're gonna talk about protecting against the big scary bad guy, ransomware, and what you can do about that. So like in our other peril video, talking about copy on write, um, snapshots pre prevent accidental deletion, right? Saves you from people uh, maliciously or accidentally deleting files. Snapshots are great for that. Another really useful thing that snapshots can protect against is ransomware. But not only that you can restore from them, but on top of that, wouldn't it be great if you could have a tool that could sense ransomware behavior and almost blow the fuse and cut that connection of that computer that's attacking the file server from it? Well, you can with a tool called SnapShield. So that's something that we've built here at 45 Drives and it leverages the features of those copyright file systems of snapshotting, as well as an algorithm built around sensing the behavior of known ransomware, as it has a pretty identifiable fingerprint so you know when you're being attacked. So we built this tool called SnapShield and we call it the, ransom, um, the ransomware activated fuse that keeps your um, storage system and all your data safe from um, a user maybe clicking a link they shouldn't. The whole point of SnapShield is to always use it with your best practices, networking, um, networking safety tools and everything like that. It's the last line of defense to keep everything safe. Um, anyway, with that out of the way, why don't we take a look at what it looks like? So why don't you join me over at the computer here? So we come in here, we're looking at Houston. We looked at Houston before. Um, we've still got our Z pool that we created before. We've got all our snap schedules and everything like that. And um, we have our Samba shares created. This is something that our organization would, would um, consume and all our file data in there. So we'll pop over to the SnapShield dashboard. And what you're looking at here is the uh, landing page for monitoring, viewing, and resolving um, ransomware events if they happen. So right now what you're looking at is the kind of dashboard. How many files were scored, blah, 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 but you can see that two events were detected. So we ran, we ran prior to this two attacks on this server. And um, what would happen there is you get, you get notified, you get an event, but what, would you, what you would see when that happened is you'd go down to quarantine here and you would see a user. They'd be banned. They'd be shut off. And that IP means to the administrators of your storage server that that computer that it sensed the ransomware was coming from got cut off. And until um, that got cleaned up and safely purged and, and safely can be re-added in the network, then you can unban them and bring them back in. So what's great about this tool is it allows you did not hit the big red button and bring the business crashing down should this event happen. You can cut it off at where the bleeding is, cauterize the wound, if you will, and let the rest of the, the, uh, the machine keep running as you can clean up and fix it. So it turns a massive event that brings everything to a halt to just like, oh, a shrug and, all right, you're gonna be out of commission for 30 minutes as I clean this up. So that's a quick overview of what SnapShield does. So that's how it kind of bans on top of that what it does is it allows you to restore files selectively. So everyone knows, everyone knows the current best practice for snapshot or for ransomware attacks right now is to have snapshots, have backups. If you get got, just reload from the latest backup or snapshot that you have. But when was the last time you took a backup? When's the last time you actually tested your backup? Um, maybe it's going to take a day to reload everything. Maybe you have your last backup a day ago, but you had critical data that was saved and worked on that day. How much productivity gets lost by just doing full restores? Wouldn't it be nice if you could be told which files were affected by the ransomware before it popped? You could just restore those files and leave everything else in place? Well, that's what you can do with, um, with SnapShield here. So here are the two events that we got caught earlier. So this latest one there, 
it affected about 63 files on the file server before Snapshield det detected it and cut it off. So what you do is the admin user will go on here and at this point, not stressed out because they already know that they've stemmed the bleeding and now they can clean up without panicking. And they would hit view and they'd look at the view here and it would be all the files that were affected in that um, um, attack. So what you can do is I already did a couple of them here, but you can click that and you're like, yep, I want that file back and you hit restore and it restores that file and you can keep going and keep going. And what it does after that too, is it takes the one that got attacked and quarantines it off. So you can investigate it or delete it or do whatever you need to do with it. Cause everyone has different um, disclosure um, rules for things that happen here. So you can reload your file that way. When you're done with the event and you've resolved all the files and you're happy, you can then hit resolve. And what that means then is it doesn't lose anything, in the, but it's marked as I've dealt with this and it's in the past. So maybe you have to report to someone, maybe you have to let them know and show them. And you're like, yep, here's an event that happened, like the audit trail. Here's where it got, here's what it did, here's what it restored, and here's how we resolved the file. So it turns massive, critical, like game-changing, game-ending attacks on your storage server and on your company's data, the lifeblood of everything, and just turns it into a nothing. Like it just like that. So that's a look at SnapShield. That's what SnapShield does to protect against one of the big scary perils of file storage, malicious people ransomwareing your data. So if you'd like to know more about SnapShield, please reach out to us here at 45 Drives and we can talk to you about how you can add SnapShield as that last line of defense to your storage infrastructure. So why don't you catch us next time as we go over that last set of perils. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that.